Yay. Now you can go. Hey everyone, it's Simone. I'm here with Bella Crystal of Unlock Your Design. And we are, an, our special guest, um, Teresa Padilla, who is, sorry, my, I had to click on the recording, Zoom recording. Let me start over. Hi, everyone. I'm Simone. I'm here with Bella Crystal, my partner with Ashley Nicole in Unlock Your Design. And we are in our Living the Body Series 2. And our special guest for Living the Body 2 is Teresa Padilla. Um, Teresa is uh, has two doctorates, has studied Chinese medicine and the I Ching for 17 years. And her magic is medicinal foods and our living the body series two is called the cauldron medicinal foods chinese medicine I Ching, and human design and we are in episode two if you were with us last week you got to see teresa talk about the triple warmer connect that to the g and the magnetic monopole it was absolutely fabulous. I had so many takeaways that I implemented that day in my life. So grateful. Thank you, Teresa. And today's theme is medicinal foods. So welcome, Padi uh, Teresa. Bella, thanks for co-hosting this, this week's episode with, with us. And where should we begin? <laughs> I'll say hi, thank you. Thank you both. And I'm so grateful to be here. Um, and thank you for all the participants who's coming. I, you know, I was getting confused in my mind that today was uh, Chinese Medicine Day. So it's a little, a little mix for me probably when we give, so it's a bonus for everybody today. Let's pivot to Chinese medicine today. That's not <laughs> within the energy, you know. That's a little everything, right? <laughs> We're 62, the scientists, so uh, I love it. Followed by super abundance. So, hey, we're ready, right? <laughs> yes, let's do it. So do I pull up the slides that we have or do we improvise? What's yeah, maybe pull up the slides and improvise as we go along. Is this what we're expecting? Is it the right presentation? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> May, is this transit not connected to the logical channel or? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I feel a lot of right brain stuff going on today. <laughs> um, yeah. Can I pre see? Can we go to the next one? Because I have kind of a conversation that I had with. Bella a while back and I thought just thinking that might be a good place to begin um, because in introducing the medicinal foods today that's kind of what we're talking about in this episode and in working with the foods um, a lot of people come from a perspective of chemistry when working with the foods and there's nothing wrong, you know, obviously with that, there's yin and yang. I'm trained more in the physics part of working with the medicinal foods and the energetics of that. And what that means is the properties in the environment that a food, food is grown in. And that's what we're going to go over today. And I had a conversation with you, or not a conversation, I think it was a voice message and text Bella, a while back about um, the environment when you have traveled uh, to different places and the foods that were just naturally in those places people were eating that went according to the seasons. Can you share some of that? Yeah, I would love to. And especially for me, this happened in Italy because that's where I really understood that it's 
that it's even a culture that is still with the young ones. And I mean, young ones, I kind of mean, <laughs> you know, 30 and over, because that's where that that's, oh, maybe a little bit like 25 and over. And that is that in Italy, you eat with the seasons. And it's really the quality of the, what do you say in English, like the pr produce. So you're going to have in May, the second week of May, there is this special fava, which like a, is a green bean that you eat with, with, with pecorino cheese. And it's basically just that fava, pecorino cheese, and a little bit of olive oil. And that's the, that's what you, that's what's growing at that moment. And it's the same thing every year. And for me, it was like just discovering that eating locally produced by the seasons. It's, it's something that I don't know, it just makes joy of eating. And it also goes with those traditions from generation to generation. So it's not, and I feel like so much in other countries that I've been, I mean, whether it's France or Sweden, in France, we would think that there is so much culture around food, but the young generation is a lot of like pasta and ketchup. So there is something with Italy that I feel like play even, even fast food chains like McDonald's or, or, Starbucks like what I can see is that they have le much less impact on the culture it's the bar where you kind of go and you get your coffee the same way and you put your like your your sense on the on the bar thing and you you wouldn't wait for more than 30 seconds for a coffee like it's part of the culture how you how how it's done in a way that has that touch that Italian touch and it's not that easy to come in with something else and say now we should eat pasta because it's easier no it, it is a respect for it is for respect for tradition and respect for what I feel too is Mother Earth. And you will have a lot of people on the Saturday morning uh, and other times in the week too, when there are these um, markets that go and choose the things from the markets and you will know the people that say, oh, today we have fish from here or today, no, it, like it's, it's really much more with that local environment and even knowing the people that bring you the food and going in a person, to, like in person to buy it, buying it with a wrap that is like, you know, not plastic, but actually the way that they just do like a, a brown recycled paper. Like, it's just, I don't know. For me, it was beautiful to, to experience that. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's it. Thank you. That was so enriching for me to hear because, um, you know, working with the foods for so much time, I know that that environment, like say when you grow a grape, the, the wine uh, that comes off of those grapes, the environment that that's grown in has certain notes in that, in that in that grape and makes it have a certain flavor. It's the same with any food, not just grapes and not just wine. Um, so a lot of people, you know, in getting food like from out of season, that's from another country into where we are, um, there's a sort of kind of losing of medicinal value. Uh, sometimes when we do that, it's not as fresh, it's not as live, it doesn't uh, go directly into certain organ systems. So that's kind of what I wanted to introduce today is that the chemistry of a food can be uh, manipulated and changed. But the physics of the food, where it's grown and the dynamics of that it can't be changed, it's in there. And it's similar, like I know in the last episode, we're gonna go into more of the PHS and some human design and uh, uh, kind of pairing that with the medicinal foods, um, but it's so much, they're so connected and so relevant that that environment that your body is in, that is locked in. The environment that the food is grown in it's locked in and you can't change that. So therefore those properties of those food and the energetics of that, I think it's important to know what they are so that you know where they go in your body, how you can use them, have more wisdom and more insight so that you can be aware of what you're putting in your body three or four or six or seven or eight times a day, every day, you know? I see kids and 
you know, they're not, they just, they have certain things that they get used to. A lot of them is because of their, their culture, like you were talking about, Bella. That's what I noticed that the culture that they're grown in and then their own design or that, that they're living in, that pretty much dominates what they want to take in as a kid. And um, they're very much influenced by that. So it's hard for me to see a kid when they're all scattered and crazy because I know that the earth element has probably been compromised in their food, on their, on their nutrition and their nourishment. Um, what's your thoughts, Simone, on what we're talking about? I love this conversation and it harkens me to growing up in South Louisiana. I'm Cajun and, um, you know, my family, my grandfather always had uh, a garden. He had a garden, you know, with, he, he, he was a scientist. He actually taught science and he grew his own, you know, he's, he had his, uh, he planted the seeds, he did the, he started all his plants from seeds, he grew the garden, and we ate from that garden, and I was thinking about also, like, um, you know, if you know the history of Cajun culture, they were exiled, the Cajuns were exiled to a place that nobody else wanted to live, and they learned how to live off the land, and so I grew up with, you know, deer season, crawfish season, shrimp season, the rice you know, everything, um, you know, my grandfather, we shucked the corn, you know, but then after we, we ate fresh corn while it was fresh, but we, there was also enough to freeze and then make cream corn or mock shoe, which is a, a, a corn dish. And then, you know, um, the eggplant, um, the, the beans, when were the beans going to be ready? When were the tomatoes going to be ready? When was the okra going to be ready? And, you know, growing up in South Louisiana in the middle of farm fields, you know, you're constantly paying attention to how's the cane doing? How's the soy doing? How's the corn doing? How's the cotton doing? You're looking at the crops that are growing all the time. So, but then I was thinking about how with freezers, right? You know, we have my grandfather would have this big garden and we would eat the fresh produce, some of it fresh, but then my uh, grandmother, my mother, my aunts, they would take that, you know, the, the extra, if you will, and prepare it and freeze it. So then we had it all year round, right? Yeah. Um, so I was, as I was listening, it reminded me of my growing up, but then also thinking about how even that, as close as we were to the seasons that, you know, with the freezer, it changes everything, right? Because you don't. And, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I was also thinking about how much I love to go to the farmer's market and buy, you know, my produce from the local farmers who were actually, you know, and and I, I was also thinking about um, Barbara, Barbara Kingsolver, who wrote a whole book about living, um, eating, you know, eating seasonally um, in the desert, you know? So what's alive in the desert and what's available in the desert each season. So, um, and what, you know, there's a season for growth. You know, we can, we can be eating fresh oranges, but they've been grown in some other country or, you know, where it's orange season, you know, or, uh, I'm in I'm in the Olympic Peninsula and I'm watching the blackberry bushes because soon the blackberries are going to be in bloom everywhere and you know um, That's awesome yeah I love I love thinking about this and also thinking about what has gotten us away from this kind of eating eating or even you know when we when we sit down to eat our family Trey and I and our friend Elizabeth we often you know or with our food, we connect with our food before we eat it. And we thank the person who planted the seed. We thank the person who grew the food and the person who harvested the food and the person who, you know, packed the food up and the person who unpacked it and the person who transported it. And we send love, you know, all the way back to the seed, to every person who actually touched our food. And I think that, you know, for me has been a very nurturing practice. That I, that's so good. I mean, I, I just have, you know, cause I have a six year old grandson and 
thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that'd be something that would benefit him greatly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, food is those, those sacred traditions like we're talking about where food and the culture um, has kind of been somewhat lost. Uh, and I believe it's because of chemistry, because of manipulating it through um, freezing food, through um, how we can grow things with uh, and keep them in ma mass product production. That's all chemical based. Because when we make choices on what uh, the physics of something is, then we have to harmonize with what the elements are that are in play. We have to make choices to harmonize with, okay, it's the season of summer and it's uh, in the Northern hemisphere and the season of winter in the, in the Southern hemisphere. So we have to make choices about what element is in play and what isn't and um, how to harmonize with that. And when we used to live off the land, those were more, much more relevant, you know, to us and in our face because we had, we had to deal with them. Now we don't have to deal with them. We can lock ourselves away in, in a room and not even know what the weather is like outside, not even know what fruit, food is uh, natural to that environment. So I think it's really important now, uh, in order to be grounded, to be aware of the choices that you're making, making in terms of the elements and, and the season that it is in terms of your body and um, be, being able to come from your own frequency and resonance. Um, any other thoughts on that? Or questions that anybody has? <laughs> I'm curious about the presentation now. I'm like yeah. sneaking. Let's go. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Maybe that the gen the chart, the five element chart. Yeah. And thanks, Simone, for this picture. Once again, your wonderful drawings. This is the in Chinese medicine, this is and the food, the traditional medicinal food therapy, I work with more of the five element um, theory and medicine because I love the seasons. I love really getting it down to an elemental, um, you know, maybe it's my earth in me, my very strong earth. I like really resonating with each element and understanding what that is. So this, is a traditional generating cycle chart. This is how the, the elements work together in a natural harmonious way when we don't interfere with it. <laughs> so this is ideally what we want to occur with uh, our dy dynamics and how we use these elements in our life. So the, the element that's predominant right now in summer is the fire element at the top of the chart. And this element, the color is red, the taste is bitter, the uh, sound is joy, the uh, organs that it works with is the heart, the small intestine, the triple heater or triple warmer that we talked about last, last week the sex circulation channel and all of these, those are like four chambers for four chambers of the heart, right? Um, so this fire element is, it's actually the only element that can transform itself. It's the only element that has the ability to transform. So here in the, and it's dominant, in summer, which means that the opposite of it, which is the, the water element, is at its weakest and its lowest point in summer. In the northern hemisphere, it would be opposite in the uh, southern hemisphere right now. So the fire, as it transforms itself, it, like the phoenix, rises to the sun and then 
ashes fall to the earth. And so it goes naturally into the earth. Um, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about the earth element because I think I was telling Simone and I think last week, if I almost decided to just share the knowledge about the earth element and not the other elements for a whole year because it's so important. And I think in the changing of our bodies and what's taking place, there's a lot of information that has not been passed along in regarding to the earth element. And I think we have to be able to ground ourselves with that element in order for that grounding to take place with the changes that are coming up in our body. So the fire, the ashes fall to the earth and descend to the earth um, naturally. And the organ systems that these are related to are the stomach and the spleen. And there's always a yin and yang organ that pair themselves that work together. You can't separate them. They're neither either yet both. They work together very, very eloquently like a marriage, a good marriage, right? <laughs> and the um, color is y yellow or gold. So this comes into the foods that you play. A lot of gold or yellow foods are gonna be around. The shape is round. Are gonna be more earth element foods. Uh, that kind of helps you identify that. Uh, you know, when you hear somebody singing there or humming a lot, which I do almost every day, that means that that person has uh, a good balance of the earth element in their life. They're expressing that the singing is the expression of the earth. Um, and then the earth, what it does, those ashes fall, and they, they start for coming together to form elements like metal combinations. So they go into the metal in deeper into the earth. And so there's some contraction that takes place in order for this to occur. And the organs that are associated with this are large intestine and lungs. And once again, those work together as a pair. And white or pastel colors, that's the colors that are associated with this. Um, you know, season of, of autumn is associated with this and fall. Um, and sadness, grief is, is, the, uh, is the emotion that's associated with this. Um, and then as those metals contract and form a bond, what happens is they actually draw water to them. And I have a wonderful example of this. I have granite, um, you know, countertops in my bathroom and I put these crystals, one on each end, because it's a double sink vanity area. And I have a Jade Buddha on one end with some of my citrine crystals gathered around that to raise up the energy from the drain from the sink. And then I have my rose crystals on the other one. So I've got yin and yang, kind of more masculine and feminine. And I was wondering what this stream of pink like water that was kind of residue that was coming across the counter was. And then there was kind of a more of a brownish kind of green on the other side. I couldn't, and I thought there was a leak. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's like the metals, you know, they're drawing the water or the aquifer to those, those crystals or those stones. So I thought uh, that was interesting, but that's what the, the met, the, the metal is so strong of a bond at that point that it can draw an aquifer that's clear, clear across the world to it that matches those metals. So the water is deep and more yin of an element and it's more inside. It's related to our essence and it's related to the season of winter. Um, and the kidney and the bladders are, are the organ systems that are associated with that. The taste is um, salty and more dark uh, purple blue foods are associated with that kind of curvy lines, you know, are associated with that. And then as that water uh, is present, what happens is as it begins to move uh, in certain places and circulate, what happens is that 
there are seeds that start to sprout and form and it rises up and that goes to the wood. And this is where most people that I, in the United States of America, at least for sure, have predominant wood uh, as an element. And so the liver and gallbladder systems are here, organ systems are highlighted, the color green, the um, anger, you know, shouting, rising, you know, very quick energy. Um, that's all associated with the wood. And then the wood rises and, and feeds is like the fuel for the fire to burn. So the cycle is complete. Um, now there is a, this is a natural cycle. Um, what happens if we're not in harmony with that, say we choose that chemistry over physics, <laughs> what happens is you're gonna be using the star on the inside because, um, and this is the controlling cycle. So what happens is the fire would more damage the lungs, cop dominate or control the lungs in that time. You see an arrow going to the lungs and large intestine. And then those lungs, if it kept on going, that would affect the wood element or liver and gallbladder. And if that you kept on going, it would affect the stomach and you just see it just keeps on going. Uh, and if it kept on going, what happens is it reverses itself. And then we have chronic conditions that begin and those take a long time to heal or to work with. So ideally, you know, to choose to work with each of the seasons and the foods that are associated with those seasons, then what you're do doing is you're teaching your body how to resonate naturally with those each one of those elements as they occur. My body right now, I don't even have to think about because I've done it for like 20 years. I don't have to think about uh, what foods, it just, my body automatically says, oh, you know, automatically craves, so to speak, or speaks to me, this is the food in, uh, naturally, you know, what I need for that, for that season. Now, I, I am not a, you know, a, a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. This is all work that I did with a doctor that was trained and my own diving deep into it for a long time, a lot of work and working with other people with it. So I do still think that you should work with your own doctor on this, um, but because everybody has their own constitution. And we'll talk about how you can use that a little bit deeper, probably more into the last, the last episode. Any questions that anybody has? Or? Just stop sharing for a moment to see if there are any questions because I can't see the chat at the same time. No, you can, I mean, you could use the chat if you're in the webinar or the Q&A, but I think we are, it's very clear so far. <laughs> so. Okay, well, should we go right into the foods then? That's what everybody wants to know about, it seems like sometimes. Yeah, but then maybe we could circle back around because I'm wondering if when you were in the internal cycle, so the in internal store so then what might be some indicators that someone is in that internal store where yeah should we can you bring that one up again bella <laughs> sorry <laughs> we are just we're wanting to move aren't we <laughs> Yeah, good question. Um, okay, let's say we're in we're in we're in the season of summer here in the northern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So, something that I get I see a lot and with clients a lot that I have is they get overheated. They have inflammation. They have uh, symptoms of inflammation and being overheated. And um, so, examples of this are they sweat a lot. 
They uh, maybe are dehydrated, quick to anger, uh, headaches, um, joint, it can be joint pain, rashes, um, maybe too much congestion in the, in the lungs. Uh, all of these things can be a result of inflammation and over, over excess in the fire, with the fire element. Uh, eyes burning, and sometimes this can replicate, it can act like allergies, which people call it allergies. And because I'm more trained in Chinese medicine, I would, I would call that uh, excess with the fire and, and the uh, wood. Um, so too much so, and what can result from this and what kind of foods? Maybe they're barbecuing a lot. So when you use a barbecue, what happens is the grill's pretty hot, right? And maybe now we have these air fryers that can cook food very quickly, but it's also hot. If you're gonna cook something more quickly, what means, even though it might not be, the temperature might not be so hot, it, to create the kind of, uh, quickness to cook the food, there's a lot of energy involved in that. So there's some heat that's going to go into that. Uh, that can be too much when you already have a lot of abundance of sunshine and abundance of fire going on. So when you're pairing fire on top of fire on top of fire on top of heat and say, okay, let's do another example. You're cooking a lot of steak, a lot of beef, maybe some uh, adding some wine and some uh, hard spirits to that. Those are, we're gonna go into the energetic chart. These are all hot energetic foods and hot environment outside. So if you keep on doing that, I mean, you are going to create an excess be, unless you're just extremely thin and in a real work in a cold environment or maybe inside an air conditioning all time and maybe uh, you need that heating up but for most people this is going to create some excess and too much heat so what happens is and you can create exhaustion that way as as well so what happens in the internal one it starts affecting the lungs and large intestines. So then you get those allergy symptoms, that inflammation in the lungs, inflammation in the intestine, maybe you become constipated. Constipated is an example of too much heat. Diarrhea is an example of too much cold, not necessarily what you want to talk about, but that is an example for getting real with it <laughs> of what's going on there. Now let's say that just keeps on going. So now you have heated uh, eyes, you're sweating, you get headaches, and now I've got congestion in my lungs, I'm constipated. So it keeps on going because you're not harmonizing, you know, with the, the natural cycle, then it's going to affect the liver and gallbladder. So now maybe your muscles, maybe you snap a muscle. Sometimes people think that is because of activity, but maybe it's because those now muscles have become so, so tight and so much excess in them that they just snap. Uh, possibly a uh, gallbladder, um, that could affect your back. Your back can start hurting, your neck can really chronic pain in your neck. Um, and then this can lead to then the stomach where the stomach starts shutting down. Um, because it's, we're in survival mode now. So as we really use the physics and harmonizing, what happens is your, your, everything opens up to you. You start becoming more intuitive to what your needs are and the cravings become more intuitively intrinsic to your body at the time. And you start craving things that your body actually does need. That's a true symptom of craving. Um, when you're in this other cycle, the cravings can lie to you because you'll still have the same taste, like say the stomach might 
you might, the taste is sweet. So you might go for a bunch of like really refined sweets, but your body might need the really natural sweet that comes off of uh, butternut squash. That's sweet. And it's very nourishing and building up for the stomach and spleen. So that's an example, I think. Does that make sense? I love it. It's a fantastic example of, you know, the process. And I felt like that was really important to understand. So then let's say the process, you know, you, uh, you affected your, your, your lungs and then your wood, your earth, your kidney, and it headed back up to fire. And then you said, if it goes all the way through, like almost like spiral dynamics, like one level, it reverses. So just give us, could you give us a couple of examples? And that would be chronic, you said. And so what, what might that look like? We just have gone, you know, one layer deep. We're now back up to fire and the process is going to reverse and it goes into chronic. Could you give us a couple of examples of how that might look, what that might look like from fire to water, maybe water to earth? And okay, well, the water would put out the fire in that case. So what happens is uh, people who have really cold feet and hands a lot, specific, and when it's summer, you have cold feet and hands, uh, that is a shutting down of the fire element. Um, and the kidneys have been compromised as well and the bladder. Uh, so the key is, is to go in the middle with the earth on that. So maybe we can talk about the earth element a little bit because the key is on a lot of these things. If you have, if you have excess or deficiency, the key that you can do yourself and anybody can do is you go to the earth because the earth is neutral. It's gonna reset your whole body and whole system. And that is so important and it's gonna ground you, it's gonna center you everything gets integrated through the earth. It can't bypass the earth. Nothing can bypass the earth. So um, this is why supplements sometimes don't work. Once again, you're trying to bypass a natural process that is organic within your body and within the elements of the season and with the land and the planet that you're on and in the, in the micro macrocosm that you are in. So we're trying to bypass that by using a supplement. I do it in some, some cases, but when you continue to do that, what happens is you're making a choice uh, rather than Heart choosing to harmonize with the natural cycle. Now, if you're using a supplement that adds and enhances to what you're naturally doing, and maybe you're so much of a, in, a, in a deficit that you need kind of a boost to prime the pump, so to speak, then yeah, you need something that might, you know, really kick it into gear so you have an opportunity to even get to the plate, then yeah, I think that works. But what happens a lot when, you, when you're not using that in harmony, what happens is it becomes toxic. Those supplements become toxic to the body because the earth is not gonna integrate, integrate them because it's not in harmony with a natural cycle. Lovely, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I love, I love that you said everything is integrated through the earth. Makes so much sense, right? We're in, we're in bodies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, can we go to the, um, the earth one and then we'll go to the foods because I think we'll probably spend a, maybe a lot of time on the food. So if we can get that neutral, yeah, that one, then we can spend the rest of the time on the foods and questions. 
Does that sound good? Sounds great. Okay, so the neutral foods and the earth element, uh, this is what I'm talking about. The, one of the, th the keys that you know about the earth. When I wanted to, well, let me backtrack a little bit. I, I saw something that Richard Rudd said, and a lot of times the core is called the Hara in ancient, other ancient wisdoms. Uh, so every system that has any kind of longevity on this planet has the earth element that they work their system around. Any business that has any kind of longevity will have to have the earth element at the core. I was a part of a not-for-profit for a number of years and I couldn't figure out, I was always wanting balance and that's how I found, <laughs> that's how I started studying the, the food therapy in the first place, which, you know, my body was like, you need the earth element. <laughs> and um, my teacher said, you know, they were just, people were always out of balance in that, that not-for-profit not organization because they didn't have any core uh, earth that was the center of the organization. So, and he said, it's, it, it's not, it's going to fall apart. And that's exactly kind of what's happening now. It's, it's felt falling apart. It's taken a long time, but that is what's happening. So you, you can't bypass it. Um, and it will come back to bite you and it does. So this is another interesting thing that occurs when you sleep at night. Uh, the earth rules any transitions. Uh, so when you go to sleep at night, where do you go? You go, you retreat through your navel where you came from. You came from the womb through your navel. You go to the earth element at night and your body is open to balancing the yin and yang of the macrocosm and the microcosm uh, it's open to all of that but you retreat to the earth um, for your core and your sustenance between every season we retreat to the earth whether we're conscious of it or not we will retreat at the end of every day we retreat to the earth at the end of every cycle, we retreat to the earth. Um, so we have that naturally occurring all the time. Sometimes we don't go with that. Sometimes we decide to, rather than let ourselves have that retreat time, which 11, 11, uh, every day and every night, that's a natural retreat time for the flip of yin to yang and yang to yin. And that, that is when we go to the earth. So when we decide to, we're going to just max out our energy during that time rather than really retreat, then we're not really harmonizing with the earth element and, the, and we're not going to have that integration time that we need during that. So learning to about the neutral foods, what you can do is you reset all of this for yourself. It's like, it's like a big boost. It's like a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, 100, 100 million chance. You get another opportunity. You get all these opportunities throughout the day, throughout the year, throughout our lifetime to reset your whole system with the earth element and with the neutral foods. So that as I listened to you, it felt so forgiving, you know. It is, and you know, I'm not one, I think I used to be one with any kind of, I was a little bit more dramatic, you know. I, I do a deep dive into whatever I do, I'm 150% into it. <laughs> when I decide to do it, I do it. And, um, I have went to the extreme with a lot of that and I've learned 
with the foods, it's, it's given me that forgiveness um, to realize that we can just be in neutral for a while and it's okay. It is that forgiveness The neutral. The neutral is the forgiveness. It's that forgiveness place. Thank, thank you for bringing that up, Simone. You bet. Should we go to the food chart? Yeah, let's do it. It's the star, right? Everybody wants to know about their food. Yeah. So this will scroll up, but let's start here at the beginning. Um, so this is the energetics that I was talking about. I'm not as good as Ashley as apparently with this, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't know how you handle all that, but I'm very grateful. <laughs> um, the, the energetics of the food, this, this is what we were talking about. So we've got categories on the left. Um, the first category is proteins, meat, fish, poultry. This also includes like dairy. Uh, which is a protein. So we've got hot, which is a lot of yang, which I was talking about before. Then we've got warming. Whenever you get to be the neutral, and then we've got to the other side, cooling or warming, a little bit to either side is going to be your, your tonics, is what's called in Chinese medicine. These are tonifying uh, foods that help build up. Uh, that's what tonifying means. It's going to build up that element within you that is deficient. And you need to have built up so you can have more sustenance, more nourishment. When you have a base, <clears throat> it has to be strong enough to support itself. If there's too much uh, say too much yang, then it, the yin becomes depleted and deficient over time. And then it collapses, the yin collapses. Um, and then eventually the yang can collapse. And same thing with the yin, if you have too much yin, then the, it can't hold the yang, it'll over control it. So, it's a balance. So these tonics become extremely important in working with you, with yourself. And these are the ones that mostly when you go to a traditional medicine doctor, or I work with people a lot, is you'll add tonics to help them kind of have that little boost that they need. And these work with more chronic a lot conditions that just keep repeating themselves. If you have anemia, if you're anemic, um, like your blood is not strong enough, then what happens is you need some blood tonics to help build your blood. Uh, that would be an example. So the neutral foods in the center, these are the ones that are gonna reset your system. These are the ones that are forgiving. These are the ones that you can eat and you don't wanna eat them in excess, but you wanna eat them in balance uh, any time of year, wherever you are in the world, uh, whatever hemisphere that you're in, whatever your constitution is, you can eat these, you know, unless you've developed some toxicity or allergic reaction or disharmony because of whatever traumatic experience you might have around this food, this, there's enough of these neutral foods that you can reset your whole system. I suggest when you're learning, uh, especially those that are doing the deconditioning process with uh, the portals of deconditioning with uh, Unlock Your Design, or if you're doing any kind of uh, really working with human design, human design, to really understand your frequency and become that resonant frequency, that authentic 
frequency that you want, I suggest starting with the neutral foods because this gives you a clean slate, so to speak. It's real like rebooting your whole computer system, your whole body. So I suggest starting with that. Now, we're gonna get into the PHS in the fifth, fifth episode. I hope you all come and bring, bring people with you because what happens is that that um, PHS, uh, your dominant cognition is not going to kick in unless you have a balance with these neutral foods. You can't manipulate it into kicking in. So you have to harmonize your way into it. So this is how you do it is you start with the neutral foods. So let's go over some of those. So proteins that are neutral, beef, scallops, cow's milk, chicken eggs, those are all more neutral. Chicken eggs, not chicken. No, those are chicken eggs. <laughs> now, one thing about um, the milk and the chicken eggs, those are dampening as well. So when we have a human environment or we're living in a more humid environment, you don't need uh, that dampening food so much. But if you're in a dry environment like a desert, then these are perfect. Now, eggs that you bake into like baked goods, those are not dampening because they're absorbed by the grains, okay? So you can have eggs with that. So you just wanna watch some of the, if you eat a lot of eggs, you wanna watch that because it can create dampening in the stomach and spleen. And then that can give you rashes. It can have weight gain, water retention, uh, inflammation in the stomach and spleen, uh, congestion, uh, and it can lead to some allergies as well. Um, so pork, goose, crawfish, cheese, those are all neutral. Neutral grains, medium long grain rice, really good for you right now uh, in summer. Rice removes toxicity from the um, kidneys, from the bladder, from the intestines, from the lungs. So great during summer because there's so much flying around in the summer, you know, uh, and, it, and it removes too much water in your system too. It moves the water. Anything grown in water will move water. That's a rule in Chinese medicine. Um, corn uh, relieves dampness and it's neutral. Great food for summer and late summer and when we get into the heat. Um, you know, if you just are retaining heat a lot and you get hot a lot, a lot of hot heat flashes, corn and rice are great foods to eat. Millet, rye, vegetables that are neutral, broccoli, cabbage, beet, most round root vegetables are gonna be neutral. Yam, carrots, sweet potato, turnips, potatoes. Potatoes, they strengthen the spleen. And most, I've noticed, most people need their spleen uh, these days strengthened. Uh, that's just kind of a, we pull too much from the spleen. Jicama. Oh, it's so good for you. And it's so good to just cut up little jicama strips and dip them into like hummus or uh, have it as a snack. They're so enriching. They, they quench your thirst. They clear heat and they're a little bit sweet. So they harmonize the stomach. Uh, just real good for you. Help tonify the stomach and spleen. Radishes are excellent for you rutabagas, collard greens, all greens. I can't speak enough about cooked greens. Uh, they harmonize all the organ systems. They bring harmony to all the organ systems together. Winter squash is one of the best things for you to build up your stomach and spleen. And if, 
if you have anemic conditions, if you have joint pain, if you have weight gain, if you have bloating, if you have uh, gas, if you have um, uh, a loss of um, rigidity in your movement at all, if you have um, your blood isn't strong enough uh, and so you're losing some of your essence as far as you have dryness or losing hair or um, any of those, winter squash is excellent to have almost every day. And it's neutral, you can do that. And you could, there's a lot of different things. There's squash burgers, there's squash and collard greens with a little bit of orange zest and pine nuts is delicious. Uh, artichoke is another neutral food, kohlrabi. Green beans, so good, clear. And what I was talking about, and a lot of people in the United States have too much rising energy in the wood. Why? Because they work, they work a lot. In other European, in other cultures around the world, they have, sometimes they go to work a little bit later. They have more, a lot of more time built around their families. Um, and here in the United States, a lot of times we work 24 seven. So we have a lot of rising, too much rising energy sometimes. So green beans, neutral, clear the gallbladder and, and uh, liver channels out. Because when you have too much rising energy, what's gonna happen is gonna affect those outer channels that are the liver and the gallbladder. So that affects your neck, affect, affects all the muscles, affects uh, too strong of energy through lower back, upper neck, sides of the legs. Um, so you can become stiff there. You can become rigid in your thinking um, as well, not so flexible. So green beans are excellent for that. Taro and taro root. Um, fruits, avocado, figs, grapes, papaya, plum. Grapes are wonderful uh, neutral food. And I told last week that I don't really believe in fasting because it's kind of depletes some of the, I mean, I have done it and I will do it if there's just a lot of toxic, toxicity, but I can remove toxins now with the foods that I eat. So I don't really need to fast um, unless I want to just have a good retreat, body, mind, and spirit. Uh, you know, I usually don't fast uh, anymore because I don't need to. Um, but grapes, they remove toxicity. And there have been, they worked with uh, veterans from the from Vietnam War uh, when they had too many drugs in their system. Uh, they would lock them in a room, not, not so nice now, I guess, with that, that's kind of traumatic, but they gave them grapes and it removed, it's neutral, right? So it resets the whole system. They're moisturizing, so they help build up the yin and help tonify the yin essence. And they clear out that excess of the harshness of the energy with the anger and the built up uh, gallbladder and wood energy and they clear out the toxins. So they're very good for that. Pomegranate, and if there's a way to kind of move that screen up, you can kind of scroll it up without clicking on it, but just scroll it. It might not do it. Okay. All right, so that's an example of some neutral foods that you can have. Um, What I would like to do is after this event, maybe we can sh have a link to share this um, somehow, maybe we can do that. Uh, so you, you can have access to this, um, the whole chart. Um, so with the hot foods, cause a lot of people eat a lot of the hot foods, lamb, venison, trout, goat, tuna, chicken, turkey. This, uh, I will share this, chicken and turkey. 
Well, let me give an example of how the energy works with meat. So you have fish, they're in the water, okay? So those are gonna be more, more fish are gonna be more cooling because they're in a water, they, they live in a water, that's the environment. So when you're taking in fish, it's going to be more cooling. Now, if you have your red fish, those are gonna be more warming fish, more warming energetics because um, they live in warmer waters, okay? Now, then you have fish, then you have uh, animals that are closer to the ground. That would be like your pig, your, uh, uh, goats, not goats, but pig are more close to the ground. Those are more neutral because they are hoofed, they're closer to the ground. They feed more off of the earth. That's why they're more neutral. Then when you have um, like lamb and venison, those they're moving around venison moves around you know deer moves around they're nomadic they move all over the place lamb they move all over goats they roam um, those are real hot foods and if you notice uh, they have like lamb has a lot of uh, coating on it a lot of wool and it keeps you warm right venison uh, they like winter time. Deers like winter, you know, so they have a more thick blood. They're more strong constitution. They can take the, they can take the cold. So when you're taking those things in, you're taking in more hot foods. So those are more good for winter time because you need them during winter. Um, now chicken and turkey, they have, what are they, the, on the crown of the head, the chicken has red. It's a solar, it's like a solar connection with the sun. So that tells you that the energy in the chicken and the turkey, it rises to the sun. It's very rising energy. Now people who eat chicken, even though it's a lean meat and turkey a lot, what happens is you're feeding uh, a lot of rising energy that ends up to going to the sun going to the eyes, heating up the heart, heating up the head. And in Chinese medicine and in a lot of Asian countries, when you go to some really, uh, some doctors, women who, or anybody who's had cancer before, they will ask them if they've been eating chicken or turkey. And they won't treat them if they've been eating chicken or turkey. Because what happens is, um, a mass tissue in, in the body, when it forms, it forms very strong mass tissue. And it's rising energy, it's too much rising energy and it forms a mass mass that has a lot of inflammation and heat to it. When you're adding chicken and turkey to your diet on a day-to-day -day basis, what it does is it increases those, that mass tissue. Um, so I have worked with clients that have had cancer before and when they cut the chicken and turkey, they increased, um, well, they, de they decreased the cancer, they increased, uh, their time, they increased, I forget the word for it, what the word for it is, but they they helped heal themselves. And with the thing that I noticed the most is the inflammation in the body reduced quite a bit. Um, I'll answer some questions from this because I, I can go on all day about this, but I'd like to cater it to who we, who we have here. Well, wow, so powerful as we're waiting for questions. Thank you um, so much, Teresa. Um, so, so, so powerful. One of the things you said, uh, one question I have is you said, um, you talked about your um, 
business needing earth elements. So how would one bring earth to their business? One good way is, one thing that I do is I, I, an example that I've done, I have worked with businesses to do that. Mm -hmm. And what I do that I think works really good is, uh, you know, if you're working remotely, it's a little bit of a challenge, right? Um, but when I've went into like say a, a naturopath that I worked with, their clinic, they had quite a, quite a few doctors that worked in that clinic and, and quite a few employees. So they did have a break room and they all brought their own food in. Well, what I started doing is bringing in like some education with them about the foods and the Chinese medicine so that they can be of one mind, uh, at least on some things with that. And what they started doing is they started kind of combining some of some meals. Sometimes they would have one meal that where they would devote to the Chinese medicine where they were, all would bring some stuff into the break room. And what happened is um, they just started developing that, that, that core more and increased their business quite a bit in that year. Um, but it increased more, more than that, it increased their ability to harmonize with every part of their lives. Mm -hmm. So it helped with their family, it helped with everything. Um, that's an example. If you were doing it remotely, um, you know, I had, you know, working with those individuals on maybe coming together and having some time where you talk about like what we're doing right now. You talk about what are the foods that you're eating? What are you doing for your health? What are you doing to harmonize with the natural cycle? How are you, how are we bringing this into our business? How do we want to harmonize and integrate things through the earth? I mean, having the kinds of conversation that we're having right now with your dominant people on a more regular basis. Beautiful. We have some really great questions that I know are going to take longer than we have because we need to end now. Um, we have another master class. So thank you all for joining us. Um, uh, the questions in the chat, Julio, will hopefully weave these into one of the next episodes. So um, your a question about autoimmune and um, we'll be getting to human design and um, food in one of the later classes, but we'll swing back around in one of the episodes. Teresa, if people want to work with you, how do they connect with you? Um, you can, you know, I'm developing a website, which is a, a slow progress for me, <laughs> but right now you can email me at spiritualrenewalretreats at gmail.com. You can always direct message me on Facebook. Um, and for those in the, in the pod or the portals of deconditioning, just message me. Uh, I do individual consultations, business, business consultations, groups, and then work with the seasons. You can have a whole seasonal coaching session or a deep dive for a year. And we all, I offer retreats with a, uh, another doctor friend of mine. We have one in the fall that's coming up. Fantastic. And you know where you can reach us, unlockyourdesign.com. We're all over Facebook. You can um, join us in our academy. And if you would like the initiator or the liberator that is specific doors in our portals of deconditioning, you can use the passcode cauldron um, to receive 10% off of those um, doors. Thank you so many, so, so much for each of you being with us today. And I hope you'll join us next Tuesday, 145 for episode three. Teresa, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Take care.